The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the Scorpio Full Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we welcome Helen Franklin as our guest and a member of our circle. And uh, Helen will share with us your wisdom about this very deep labor of lifting the hydra that Hercules and every one of us as disciples have to do in our life. And um, I welcome Helen. Hello, Helen. Hello. Thank you for uh, joining the circle today. And um, I'm really grateful uh, for you being with us. Um, before we start our journey as members of Herculean of Hercules team, um, let's have uh, an alignment together as we all join in from different parts of the world today. And, um, but still we are in the same circle. So let's just use the power of our imagination to see ourselves in being in one circle. Linking together with the light of our minds. and love of our hearts. And connecting with the will to good in the center. And as we come together as one group, we align with the heart center of the group of world service. and the heart of the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, the Christ.
and we visualize humanity. And we recognize our role and the purpose of our work. Servant humanity in its path of evolution. planetary server. And as we continue our work today, we hold the visualization of our circle, the ring of fire, linking us all together in the name of Christ, in the service for humanity. Thank you. So, welcome to the circle and thank you again for joining us. And uh, Helen, please lead us and share with us. Thank you. That was lovely. Well, I would like to say it's even Evening here, so I will say good evening to everybody from Hertfordshire in England. And at the moment, we are still part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and still part of Europe. I am thinking this evening of the story of Hercules and the nine headed Hydra living in a foul and fetid swamp. This hydra uh, pollutes the water and also uh, kills any people who come near its lair or its great cave where it lives. And the story is of Hercules battling and fighting with this monster and eventually going down on his knees and lifting the hydra triumphantly into the light where it loses all its strength. I'm thinking of the knees which are related to the base center where fear and anger can get trapped and prevent the flow of prana around the body. And I'm hoping we can sense how this story relates to us on our path and to our own centers and maybe the planetary centers. Is ah. 
Now, I have just noticed, warrior am I, that my computer muted me and I did not touch it. So I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> how how much of what I said did you hear? Yes, we could hear everything. You could? Oh, yes. Good, good, good. So the soul's keynote for Scorpio is warrior am I and from the battle I emerge triumphant and unmuted. I once printed this in our international network for esoteric healing uh, journal and I, I did it with a misprint and I put warrior am I and from the battle I emerge triumphant. And there's probably more truth in this than I at first thought, because I, I guess most of us can say we are warriors and our worries are based on fears, deep fears, justified fears, unjustified fears, superficial, transient fears. But worrying probably stops us being warriors. Many of these fears live in our base centers, right at the bottom of our spines. And I'd like us just to feel those in, in our self. I know we all know where they are, but it, it's good just to remind ourselves of the feeling of our base centers. So it's at the very bottom of the spine. And if you clench your uh, buttocks and relax them, it gives you some idea of the energy of this base center and the energy flows in at the back through the body and out through the front. And we can feel the base center link with the ground of our earth. And I would like us especially to be aware of the knees. Clench and relax your knees. DK relates a base center, especially to the knees. And if you like, you can stand up and bend and straight, straighten your knees to give you a good feeling of this, the feeling of surrendering or letting go and how different that feels to standing firm and bracing uh, the knees. Both perfectly valid actions for this joint. The physical aspect of the base center is the will to stand as a human being in incarnation. So let us sense our manifestation here and now on our earth. If you did stand to straighten and bend your knees, do please sit down again. As well as our knees, this base center is also related to all our bones that support us and give us our basic shape. Our spines hold us upright in alignment, linking the heavens and the earth, protecting our electric nervous system right from the brain in its bony skull down the spine and out to all the nerves and eventually to all the cells of the body. The bones also protect our organs, our hearts, lungs, the reproductive organs, the kidneys. Let us consider our kidneys and the adrenals or suprarenals sitting above them. They also are governed by our base centers. They are formed in utero near the base center at the bottom of the spine, and then they migrate upwards towards the solar plexus area to be protected by the bony ribs. And it also brings them uh, into the energy of the solar plexus, which also is to do with emotions and fears. I'd like us just to feel where our kidneys and adrenals are. Behind you, just under the lower ribs, you can place your hands there, 
across your back and rotate the body a little so that your kidneys and adrenals get a bit of a massage. It's good to know where these bits of us are in the body. The kidneys, together with the pituitary, both stimulate the adrenals to produce various hormones which influence our blood pressure, our immune systems, and help us to cope with stress by fighting or running away or freezing still. It's been found recently that the marrow of our bones, the base centre, also produce adrenaline-like hormones that respond to stress. And all these systems, these basic systems, protect us and increase our likelihood of physical survival when they are in good balance. DK also links this center with our most basic sexual instincts, but advises against working with these energies and looking more to the sacral center with its emphasis on relationships. So this is how our base center feels physically, the will to survive in incarnation, to be here, to be here as an individual, as a family member, as a tribe, and as humanity. Humanity, the throat center of our planet. When we think of the Hydra with all its heads, its physical heads are a distortion of this sanctity of being in incarnation and these distortions manifest as the sense of a need for excess sex money and comfort sex money and comfort What about the base center emotionally? At this level, it is about the will to hold or let go of our emotions. Fear interferes with this will. We are frightened of letting go of our feelings, even if they hurt. And this results in tensions. I'm sure all of us can sense some emotional tensions within us right now. We hold on emotionally to ideas, to beliefs, jobs, and people, even when these things have served their purpose, we hold on. Sometimes we swing the other way and let go of our protective instinctive emotions or emotions we need, our higher aspirations. As an alternative to thinking about holding or letting go, we can look about looking at and acknowledging or ignoring. Courage to face facts or bury them in the mud. Our lower intestines are also governed by our base centers and they express very well its emotional qualities through constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome. These are all holding on to, letting go or being irritated. Torquem Saladarian wrote a wonderful little book on irritation, the destructive fire. And in it, he says, irritation is bad for your physical well-being. It causes imperil to accumulate and stick to the etheric nerve endings. This prevents the taking in of prana or sun energy, 
and it prevents the distribution of energy from your bodies. Imperial blocks the currents and causes nerve congestion. It is one of the greatest causes of disease that manifest on the physical level as high blood pressure, anxiety, lack of energy, or depression. The Tibetan tells us similarly of two small centers which are near the kidneys, again governed by the base center, which react to emotional planetary fear. This may indeed be the fear of the planet itself, which I suspect was a cause of its ancient near collapse and are coming in to assist it together with the lower kingdoms. But that's another story. Planetary fear at the moment feels more to me like the fear that sweeps around humanity on the whole planet, stoked by the forces of retrogression which use the negative emotional aspects of the Hydra. Fear, hatred, and desire for power. We can see these around the world. Fear, hatred, and the great desire for power. Perhaps you sometimes feel this planetary fear. It's like an uneasiness or a disease that doesn't really seem to belong to you or to your present life situation. It's a feeling of unease that we can't quite put our finger on. DK says that when these small centers near the kidneys are out of balance, they allow a leaking out of pranic energy. We receive prana from the earth and from the sun, largely into our spleens, which release it to the base center, the distributor of these fires of matter. These fires should flow easily up our spines and spinal centers, up to the throat center. There, to link with the fires of mind, the monastic fires. But fear stops this flow and reduces us to lethargy. Lethargy in individuals like ourselves and in humanity as a group is a problem for hierarchy right now. In order to use our emotional will positively, we need reason and discrimination. And here we come to the mental qualities of our base center. And the mental quality is the will to think. I think the lack of this will to think links in with these fires of matter not being able to rise to the throat and link with the fires of mind on account of our fear. How often we lack the will to think. Our minds wander about in their lower reaches, circling and not focusing on what needs our attention. How much time we waste in this state. And this wandering mind influences our emotions, makes us feel insecure, and this in turn weakens our physical will to stand as human beings. In our Hydra story, Hercules, representing us as disciples, shows how useless this wasted wandering and flailing about is. Trying to destroy things, 
in a useless way, trying to destroy our wayward personalities, blaming all difficulties on anything else but ourselves, striking out in either pride or cruelty, but seeing ourselves as separate from the problem. And all the time, we cause more and more difficulties. The Hydra heads keep reproducing. The Tibetan tells us that its mental heads are pride, separativeness, and cruelty. We may not actually act cruelly or with particular pride or separateness. But many of us have thoughts along these lines. And we have to remember that energy follows thought. DK tells us that murderers often act under the influence of mass thought forms. I guess terrorists do too. And we are all part of this general thought form that moves around the planet and we share it. In many of the stories of Hercules or Heracles and the Hydra, I notice that Hercules has to invoke the help of his nephew in order to overcome the Hydra. It's as if he cannot do it as a separated self. He needs help. I also notice that in many of the stories, Hercules goes down on his knees, not to lift the Hydra, but to pray to his father, Zeus, to help him. But whichever it is, he realizes he's not winning. He needs and is asking for help. Interestingly, the constellation of Hercules in the heavens is known as the Nila, which is perhaps how Alice Bailey gets her twist of this myth. So Hercules is definitely associated with going down on his knees. I think the knees are very important in this story. I spoke of their relationship to the base center, but they have significance and symbolism in many ways. Why do we kneel down? Traditionally, we kneel in prayer in many religions. We kneel in respect as before royalty or in reverence for an icon. We kneel to speak to a small child. We kneel to help someone who has fallen. And we also kneel in order to gain strength, to lift a heavy weight. And this seems to be most likely what Hercules is doing. Despite all the physical, emotional and mental will being used, Hercules is still not in control. The Hydra still keeps reproducing its mayas, glamours and illusions. We too can use all the personality will we can muster, but still feel impotent. What is needed most is the will of the soul. And its quality is the will to be one self. When we open to the will of the one soul, which is group, or hierarchical will, then it can guide our little wills, make good use of them, 
they lose their power but become good tools in aiding all humanity. The common good, goodwill, and the will to good for all mankind. We begin to understand. This is another interesting word with regards to lifting our hydras, understanding or standing under. The words of the great invocation point to these ideas. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. I have many questions as I study this story. What is the significance of this hydra with its poisonous blood? Remembering that the blood is a life. What is the significance of its blood eventually bringing about the death of Hercules through trickery and in revenge? What does this monster living in the foul-smelling swamp at the mouth of the underworld represent? Is it the sum total of our personalities or just the negative aspects of them? Is it the dweller on the threshold? Is it all the negativity we have failed to deal with life after life and have to come back and deal with eventually? What is the meaning of its immortality and burying its immortal head under a rock beside the sacred way? Suridarian says the rock is a symbol found in all religions and it represents the foundation of man, the divine self, the innermost reality within us. So we place our personalities clearly beneath the higher self. In some stories, the rock sprouts forth a spring of clear, unpolluted water when the head is buried beneath it. Is this a positive aspect of our personalities? I find it interesting that the family of microscopic creatures named after the Hydra are themselves immortal. They never die, as their telomeres never shorten in cell reproduction. They can be killed, but they never age or die of old age. And I thought about these telomeres, which shorten as the cells reproduce and gradually become shorter and shorter as we age. And of that idea that Saradarian said of irritation, gradually damaging our nerve, our etheric nerve endings. And maybe there's some link here. <laughs> Enough of my questions about the interpretation of the myth and its symbolism. It's the interesting thing about symbols, they can mean so many different things to different people. What we do know is that if we lift or transmute our monsters up towards the light of the soul, then allow that light to pour down and transform them, we can ultimately experience a transfiguration for ourselves and for humanity with Christ consciousness visible in and to all. This happens, the Tibetan tells us, when the whole person is energized via the base center, which is where I began. The base center energy balances with the head center energies 
which stimulate the ajna, representing the integrated personality. And all three base crown ajna come sim simultaneously and consciously into a rhythmic coordinated expression. A material force is transmuted into spiritual energy. I think that this is also interesting in regards to our present work for the festival of the group of world servers, who are, we are, the Arjuna center of our planet. And we can see the symbolism of each of us doing our lifting and lighting work and stimulating this Ajna. The microcosms influencing the macrocosm. Prior to the base energy lifting to the crown or alongside it, the sacral energies are lifted to the throat, then into the light of the soul anchored in the head center. Then the energy flows from the sacral to the throat to the soul, up and down as one energy. Physical creation is transmuted into artistic creativity for the good of our fellow humans. And we solve the problem of individual sex without recourse to either inhibition or suppression. The solar plexus energies are lifted to the heart energies, then into the light of the soul, and then they flow together. Individual emotional consciousness is transmuted into group consciousness. This serves to establish right human relations, right group relations, and right spiritual relations throughout life's entire expression. Just as a stage of regulating the creative life has a paramount effect on the physical body, so this stage of lifting the solar plexus energy affects the astral vehicle with great potency. Emotional reactions are transformed into aspiration and service. Selfish individual love is transformed into group love. And then divinity rules life. If we lift and connect with the kingdom, of souls, great visions are available to us, and we can be in control of our lives from a higher and wider perspective. The Great One who summoned Hercules to his task of destroying the Hydra said, you must conquer this monster. I will give you some advice that may help you. We rise by kneeling. Thank you. And I'd like to invite anyone who is listening to uh, make their own contributions to to this discussion say how they interpret the story or anything that that comes to them through our time together thank you Helen and uh... It's a topic that each of us reflects through own experience and everyone has own story and own 
own experience of mm. lifting own hydra. <laughs> so if anyone would like to share on thoughts and please raise your hand and we will unmute you or you can use the question section of the control panel to share. So there is a raised hand and uh, I will unmute John. Thank you, Alexander. Fantastic talk, Helen. So rich with detail and the way you manage to relate the physical body and the other planes in which we exist. I was taken by your comments about the, the poison of the Hydra's blood and how that eventually brings about the undoing of Hercules himself. It also struck me that we're not yet done with the poison in the Hydra's blood. As you may recall, Chiron, the centaur, was wounded by an arrow that had been dipped in that blood. And your comment really intrigued me, Helen, about we weren't sure whether this poison represented the sum total of our personalities or just the negative parts of it. And I thought I would see if you might speak a little bit about the uh, about Chiron and how this may relate as well to the Hydra. Oh, um, I have to. I am not uh, an expert on Greek mythology. Oh, my apologies. Mythology, um, at all, but the the spreading of this um, poison is is interesting, um, and and Charon is the wounded healer, and. Is, is it that being that eventually tricks uh, Hercules in, into, uh, or it's Hercules' wife, in fact, isn't it, who is, is tricked into uh, taking some of his blood and being told that it will give them, uh, uh, well, bring them immortality, in fact, to uh, mean they, that Hercules will never die if he wears the clothes which are uh, soaked in this, this creature's blood. And of course, it, it, it kills him, comes back to kill him. And it, it, it is indeed a, a strange uh, symbolism. But I don't know that I have any enormous insight into quite what this poison is. But I, I do find it interesting how often in the Tibetan's writing, he speaks of the blood is the life. The blood is a life. I notice it also comes a lot, I've, I've noticed it in Gurdjieff's writing too, about the, uh, the blood is the life. And this must be significant that we're dealing here with a, a poison in this life energy, the flow of, of life being tainted through, I think the, the Hydra's uh, problem first of all comes about through, is created through jealousy. It is um, Zeus's wife, well, Zeus was the father of Hercules, and Zeus's wife found that he had had an affair with a mortal and given birth who had given birth to Hercules and she spent her life endeavoring to destroy Hercules and she created this this monster this hydra in in order to kill Hercules of, of whom she was so jealous 
So all these negative feelings and thoughts that we 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 have um, affect the this wounded healer in in some way. And you know, when we look around the world at the moment, we see so much of these um, jealousies and the hatred and the cruelty and the desire for power and and they're they're there in the original story so i uh, i don't know perhaps somebody else has some um, some ideas about how Caron is affected thank you helen i didn't mean to catch you unawares with that question no, I, had, I had always considered Chiron to be ironic in that beautiful imagery of immortal so he couldn't die but wounded so he couldn't get better and mm -hmm. this ongoing almost to catch 22 as we might refer to it a struggle uh, and it was out of this struggle out of his pain that he developed the healing arts which he shared with young humanity and so some good eventually came of it okay. but I, I do love your, I hadn't traced the lineage of, I think you're onto something with jealousy, because you're right, it was out of jealousy that, uh, you know, the, um, what do we call it, the umbrage, the anger uh, expressed towards Hercules came, mm -hmm. and how that's expressed in humanity. I thank you for listening to my words, and I'd like to hear more of yours. <laughs> I, I would just say that I also think that jealousy comes or, or is part of fear, which is that very strong um, emotion in the in the base center. And usually jealousy is brought about through fear of something we, we don't trust or we don't understand. Are there any other sharings that people would like to contribute? Um, Thank you, I want to invite Christine to unmute herself. Hello. That's Hello. a wonderful, wonderful review of all my work for the past 20 years. <laughs> I don't have as deep a component, but I can tell you that the best healers say that inflammation, a form of irritation, is the cause of all diseases. Mm -hmm. And again, every dis-ease has an emotional component. My question, when you mentioned or you showed the constellation, I had no idea which one that was, unless it is Chiron. Oh, I, I to Sasha who put the, the pictures up, but I think the constellation was the constellation of Hercules. Oh, no, there is a constellation of Hercules. Uh, I see. Which, yeah. I think I'm right. Um, where would the, I well I don't know the heavens as well as I know the earth and there there he is uh, and as I say it's known as the Nila and the Nila the Nila well I, I can tell you that that is also an indication of someone feeling unsupported so um, it's important to have that information to get us moving away from orthodox medical component of drugs and surgery when we could in fact be our own healer this information really ties into it obviously you've spent many many years <laughs> digging through that perfection of knowing and i certainly wish you a long life and thank you for your contribution 
<laughs> it's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, yes, there are. We can do a great deal uh, towards helping our own health. I have no doubt about that. And um, I don't know if, if any of you have read Talk and Seridarian. It's a very small book, Irritation, the Destructive Fire, but it, it is a wonderful book and it, it does emphasize how we hurt ourselves through our, our emotions and um, they do bring about inflammation. I, I wouldn't decry uh, conventional uh, medicine entirely. I believe that DK is a master of uh, healing and of, of health. And I think he works through, through healers and uh, acupuncturists and homeopaths and herbalists and through where we're told the Red Cross as well. And I think that he does work with um, medics and in, in medicine. I think it, it just recently, uh, the drug companies, which I would put with, you know, the, this desire for power and money and, and such, such things that have really only quite recently, aren't they? They're really in the last 50 years have got in the way of true medicine being able to, to work through. But as we deal with our hydras, um, I think this will, this will change and uh, there will be a purer form of medicine for, for humanity. I want to invite Martha now. Uh, hello, Martha. Thank you, Helen, for a wonderful rendition of Hercules um, and his task. I was curious. Um, in some stories, the uh, there's a that not only did Hercules have a friend, but the Hydra had a friend, a crab, that was uh, fighting, <laughs> trying to help the Hydra. And um, I was thinking about all of the marvelous connections that you established and the um, particular story is so visceral in terms of how Hercules finally vanquishes the Hydra, which does correspond to a lot of our, our base emotions that can make us sick. But I, I did wonder, did you, what was the, how did you select this particular story for this particular time? Thanks a lot. Oh, well, <laughs> in fact, it was um, a, a small conversation I was having with um, Sasha earlier. And I was, was saying I didn't know whether it was a generally accepted idea to link the neighbors of Hercules, which are very old. There, there were um, many hundreds of years um, BC. I believe Plato is one of the uh, tellers who I, I understand is a, a previous life of uh, the Tibetan. Um, they're, they're a very old story. I don't know how long the association with the 12 signs of the zodiac is, or whether that is um, a link that Alice Bailey made. I just don't know. Uh, and I was unable to find out. I did actually try, but, but didn't succeed. Uh, in um, the original stories, the story of the Hydra is the second of, uh, of Hercules' tasks. And in this zodiacal uh, representation, um, good on numbers, but he's certainly not the Uh, Helen, this time we lost oh, you. Yeah, okay, it's gone. Back no. gone. <laughs> no, <you're back. laughs> That's because I don't know the answer to the 
to the uh, to the question. But it it it, it is worth knowing. And um, the reason I I picked this story was was simply because um, in Alice Bailey's book she links the story of the Hydra with uh, the Scorpio energies, and and that is why we we took this this story at this time it was uh, under the suggestion of uh, alice bailey and uh, the tibetan i i believe yeah, it's a very interesting question and uh, if anyone in this circle uh, knows anything about it please share mm. Christine, you have your hand raised again. Uh, if you want to add something, please unmute yourself. And also I want to ask uh, Daniela, uh, if you could please help read uh, questions. For some reason I have problems opening the questions to read them from the box. Okay. There were a couple uh, that I, I could see, but I cannot scroll them completely to read them. Okay. You want me to, to, to do it now? Uh, yes, if you could, please. Okay. Um, I think some of them you're yes. already. Suzanne. So, um, <clears throat> Suzanne Miller says, profoundly illuminating and well presented. How often the actual body is not related to the spiritual, yet why else are we here physically now, if not to become the very structure or cube to which the higher structure, triangle, shall manifest to become the sacred pyramid? Many thanks to Helen and to Alexander and crew. Thank you. Um, um, she's also asking us to provide the book name in the chat. Yes. Ah. Oh. Yeah, there are a couple more people who asked about the books that you mentioned. I believe it's one on inflammation by a Torah conservatorium. Ah, oh, yes. Um, I can see chat. Oh. If you can say the name, I, I can uh, type it in the chat. It is Irritation, the Destructive Fire. Uh, um, while I'm typing that, uh, Daniela, there was another question. Uh, yeah. Um, so, thank you, Helen, for sharing these thoughts today. Wondering why the light would kill the Hydra. It makes me ask if light is light a weapon. Does it transform simply with illumination to truth in a form of exposure? We don't seem to view light as a weapon. Is it a weapon? That is a question from Jan Oliveira. <laughs> um, I think that it is, I mean, I suppose in a way it is a weapon, yes, but I think that when we really have the courage to look at something and observe observe it as it is, then it, it loses its power. I think the, the thing with the Hydra is it, it just wilts. All its energy goes in the light. And I think to some extent it's linked with lifting this base energy up to the crown center, 
which stimulate muted Ajna. And then by focusing the Ajna and the light of the Ajna upon a situation, the, the Maya and the glamour and the illusions just melt. They, the, the light shows them as being nothing. They just, they just fade in the light. So you could call it a weapon, but it, it is more the courage just to look at things as they actually are. And once they're held in the light and the will of the soul is revealed, then you see that they have no, they have no power. So how, uh, how I see it. Unmuted. Then um, there is from Mary O'Reilly. My thought. We can't destroy the darkness because it returns again and again. We need to acknowledge and accept its presence so that the heart can ultimately transmute it into light. The idea of becoming impersonal and not always personalizing the emotional, the emotional means perhaps we can take on board that we are engaged in an impersonal work of the divine, divine. The Hydra wants to stay. Excuse me, I'm losing the, I have to scroll as well. <laughs> so the Hydra wants to stay in the loop and darkness and only lifting it into the light is its transmutation back into some semblance of the original divine idea. Apologies if this is a little incorrect from Mary or really. No, no that, that's, uh, it's good. And that there is some significance in, in this taking the final head of the Hydra and, and putting it under this, this rock where in some of the stories it, it glows and um, produces a, a, a stream of fresh, uh, purified water. So uh, there is um, there is a story also of, of redemption within the Hydra it, itself. But I I don't uh, darkness. I think is just where there is no light, and not so sure that darkness actually reproduces itself. I think that where there is light, there is not darkness. And that light is the light of the soul. But prior to that, yes, there's a lot of battling uh, that has to go on. Thank you. And then um, Christine Moore is asking, which book and pages in AAB? I'm not sure. It's, uh, I believe it's about two letters of Hercules. Okay. By Alice Bailey. Yes, it's just the labors of Hercules. Um, It's a wonderful book. Uh, it's a collection of uh, lectures that Alice Bailey gave uh, at some point on astrological significance of each of the labor. I highly recommend uh, reading it. It's very illuminating. Yes, it's, it's on page 140 in, in that book. And there is a, a the um, Lucy's Trust made um, a CD, didn't they, about the labors of Hercules with many artistic, creative ways of looking at it, which is 
I'm, I'm sure if you got in touch with the Lucis Trust, they also would be able to to send that CD. Um, I, it, it's not just a CD; it's um, uh, a visual one. What are they called? <laughs> uh, but it, it it has a lot of lovely art on it, and it, it it's a great great teaching tool. It is a great teaching tool. I wonder if we ought to be moving into our meditation on the seed thought. Are, are we about at that stage now, or are there many more questions? There are a um, couple more comments, and uh, maybe let's have a few, uh, a few more minutes uh, for sharing, and then we go to meditation. Um, okay. Katya wanted to share something, so I invite Katya. Oh, hi, Helen. Hello, Katya. Yeah. Lovely to hear you. Yes, and uh, thank you. It, it is really, I will have to listen again to this talk because there's so many insights that are coming from what you said and, uh, and so many actually solutions that you mentioned. Um, as for the will and the group will, the will of the soul, which is one. But mm. you know what? Um, it was interesting to me because when you start talking about the needs related to the base center, I also remembered that somewhere, I believe, became mentions that knees are ruled by a Capricorn. Yes. And so that's an interesting connection because if we talk about energy or anything lifting, being lifted or supported by the base center into the head center. So if we talk Capricorn, then it becomes the light of initiation and something buried underneath the rock, which again, Capricorn represents the mountain. Mm. So whatever was for Hercules rock, probably for us, it is quite a mountain. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's, it's, it takes, I believe, the light of initiation, the moment when uh, the angel of presence and uh, dweller on the threshold are coming together. Yes. And um, the angel of presence absorbs whatever we can not uh, work out through our life um, practices. It's just, it's the task of the soul. And thank you so very much that invoking the will of the soul and uh, in certain instances, as you, again, thank you so much for mentioning that certain things coming on the planetary level. So there are tasks um, that ought to be taken from that standpoint. It's not just the base center of your own uh, vehicle. It's the base center of the planetary vehicle that we need to stand on as a group in order to lift those um, thought forms that are poisonous to our to humanity as, as a whole yeah. and it's a good i mean it's just it's a good reminder that we need to um that we need to actually discriminate be between those instances and not to try with our own small vehicles to um, do that that work that that I believe what gets us burned. It's not so much. I mean, I, I don't I don't think I have a question yet because so so many stimulating uh, thoughts and uh, that that you put out. But I definitely deeply appreciate what you the what, not only what you've said but the way how you structured it and those, I would say, so necessary uh, ways to heal for us to look at, if we have that, you know, strength in us. 
to look at that with all heroes. Thank you very much and much, much love to you. Thank you. I, I do think, you know, when we meet together like this, you know, in the in the ethers, we we do gain from from working as a, a group. I think we we hear ideas, we see things differently and and in a more planetary way. So I, I think it's all part of the the group work that we, we get these insights and uh, understanding. So thank you, Katya. And I'm inviting the last comment from uh, Rosie. Uh, uh, Helen, I just want to thank you. It was a wonderful talk. And uh, uh, like you said, the meaning and significance could be different from different people. But mm. to me, this talk relating the labor of Hercules with our own health was something, a new perspective for me. So I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you, Helen. Well, oh, thank you, Rosie. And thank oh. you for being there. Of course. <laughs> bye bye now. Bye-bye. So it's thank you everyone for sharing and contributing to creating this group focus and Please, Helen, lead us in meditation. Thank you. Uh, how, how long do we have for the meditation? We have uh, about uh, 14, 15 minutes. Fine. Right here. So we're going to bring ourselves into meditation with the seed thought, warrior am I, and from the battle I emerge triumphant. We will lift our centers into the light of the soul, especially our base center, energies up to our head centers, the crown and arjuna, and build a bridge of light for the highest and lowest to meet. And may the will to good triumph. Let us begin by feeling our bodies, our base centers on the chair or the floor. Know our connection with our earth and with the mother of the world anchored at its center. Symbolically, let us bend our knees, ready to align and lift into the light. Just to prepare ourselves for meditation, just rotate the head, relax twice, clockwise, and twice counterclockwise. Take a deep, super mundane breath of energy through the top of the head and in exhaling, release all our tensions, physical, emotional, and mental. Bring our focus to our heart centers. And we radiate love to ourselves, to our personality selves, our subconscious selves, 
and our higher selves. We radiate love to each of our etheric centers in preparation to transmute and transform. And we radiate love to one another as a group gathered in the ethers at this time together. Let us begin to stand fearlessly as we face our monsters. As one, we lift our lower centers up the etheric spine, step by step, up to the group heart in the head. Sacral to fruit. solar plexus, to heart, and base, to crown, stimulating the arjna and lifting into that heart energy within the head. We sense and open to the vibration of the ashram within hierarchy. With the Christ standing at its heart center. We sense the energy of loving wisdom and strong silent will. As we see the Christ surrounded by the triangle of the Buddha, the avatar, of synthesis and the avatar of equilibrium. As a group, we open to the energies of the courts of Shambhala. And then to the fires of the sun and of Sirius, the home of our great white lodge. Sends the energies flowing up this alignment to Sirius and down to the heart of the mother of the world. Sense the flow and the circulation at every level.
we invite the energies of the constellation of Scorpio to enter into our alignment. And we meditate upon the seed thought. Warrior am I. And from the battle, I emerge triumphant. The words of the soul. Gently 
We allow any impressions received in the silence to permeate into the group mind and to precipitate as ideas or thought forms. We visualize the energies received radiating outwards to every member of humanity around the globe. The energies of light triumphing on earth. Focus ourselves together again as a soul group around the Christ. In the center of all love, we stand. From the center, we, the soul, will outward move. From this center, we, the ones who serve, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad through our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Visualize again our alignment bridge as we stand courageously together. See light, love and power flowing into the centers of our planet. The sun, our soul, Shambhala, our head center. Hierarchy, the heart center. The group of world servers, the Ajna. The throat center, humanity. animal kingdom, our solar plexus, the plant kingdom, our sacral, and the mineral kingdom, our base center. Sense this for our planet and for ourselves.
Now see the energy flowing into the planetary inlets. And right into the very center of the planet. Uplifting and transforming as we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Helen. Thanks, everyone, for our group service in this time of Scorpio Solar Festival. As we stand together as an individual group and planetary purpose together. Thanks everyone who shared their impressions and thoughts. We didn't have a chance to read all comments. Let's keep our alignment as we prepare for the exact time of full moon tomorrow. Standing as one group. And I want to invite you to join our coming webinars.
the next webinar will be on I'm trying to find the right slide, so sorry for a little delay. Okay, here it is. Um, so on November 26, we invite you to join the fifth webinar in this series of manifestation of the new civilization, where we bring together groups from the triangle of countries, United States, Russia, and United Kingdom. This time, um, the group from the United States will join this work, the Wisdom Group, so please join us. And on November 29th, we will continue our work with the Sustainable Development Goals, meditatively supporting and strengthening the thought forms of each goal. And in the cycle of Sagittarius, we will work with the goal 15, life on land. And our next full moon webinar um, will be not usual webinar. And uh, as we learn to work with the energies of different cycles in Sagittarius, we will align with the axis of Gemini Sagittarius and we will come together as a group to focus our group intention on the coming festival week of the World Service Group, also known as the Festival Week of Group Impact. So please join that gathering and we invite you to Prepare for the festival week already now, planning your group activities and your individual work with the world group during that week. Thank you very much. And Let's stay connected. Namaste. Mm -hmm.